Actually, had these guys lived there, they would have been killed by the time they were eight months old because that's when they get their first winter coat. Well, just like kind of the fur that you see on these guys now. But unfortunately, they kill them through electrocution, which is inhumane, doesn't work all the time. So these animals do sometimes that's end up... make sure everybody stays off the black railing. You can, you can kind of lean on it, but keep your feet off because otherwise all the chairs are off. Now, be nice. This has nothing to do with his color. He's just a black phase. Your gray wolves can come anywhere from white to black, but he is a certain locality. Uh, he is actually a British Columbian wolf, which is just basically what they call their gray wolves out in British Columbia. They're not an official subspecies like we'll see uh, with our Mexican gray or our Arctic wolves today. Uh, now, these guys at one time, we had about four. So our gray wolves are doing very, very poorly, and a large part of the reason why uh, is because of the, um, <laughs> look at that, he's actually eating fast, is because of the undermining of the Endangered Species Act. In 2011, uh, there was a rider that took place on the budget bills, and they stripped the wolves of north of I-70 of their endangered species status. Immediately after, your states like Idaho and Montana and Wyoming began to kill the wolves off in mass. Uh, in less than two years, we went from 1,700 wolves in the Northern Rockies to killing over 1,200 of them. So we have very, very few wolves. Now, yes, they do reproduce, and they put more pups back in the ecosystem. But your packs are a family. So you have the mom and the dad and their kids. So even if you have eight wolves in a pack, typically, not all eight are having puppies. And there's only three to five per litter with a 50% survival rate through the first year. And then you add in the fact that 60% of the wolves killed last year were pups, just like Kenai. Kenai's seven months old, mm -hmm. uh, and unfortunately our hunting season out in Montana and Idaho and Wyoming began in September. Um, Idaho and Wyoming actually began uh, on July 1st because they go year-round, and it's very unfortunate. That's not how you treat any animal, let alone one that you've designated as big game. Uh, they don't have the same protections like our bears and mountain lions. When you go out and hunt bears and mountain lions, you cannot kill a sow with her cubs or the female mountain lion with kittens with spots or anything like that, but your wolves don't have the same protection. So we are losing our wolves at a horribly rapid pace. Our canines are going to be right up at the fence. Uh, they just have grown up to be your very typical wary wolves. Now, that's not really a bad thing. We don't care how our animals grow up because we're just a sanctuary. Uh, so they can be whoever they want to be. Unfortunately, uh, these guys have a rather sad story behind them as well. Uh, uh, these two Crows are looking for uh, snacks. Snip some meat. They have been intended to be somebody's pets. Uh, so these guys were two of about 280,000 wolves and wolf dogs that are born and sold to the general public every single year. Now the problem is, out of that 280,000, 80% of those wolves and wolf dogs are euthanized before they reach their third birthday. And the reason why, all too often, and I'm sure a lot of us have raised dogs before, when your dogs hit two years old, they turn into very good pets. I know my German Shepherd, when I was growing up, destroyed our house. He ate our stairs. We had to replace the stairs. He hit two years old and he turned into an angel. Best dog in the world. Well, unfortunately, these guys, a wolf or a wolf dog, they hit two years old and they have reached maturity. Now, unlike your dogs, uh, with a little known fact, your dog is actually...
Well, we get most of our food from the Rock Show, the food bank of the Rocks is in Denver. Cool. <laughs> that article has got really, really awesome. <laughs> gorgeous. So this is the big giant ham that everybody's really up on. Yes, I know. Oh, nice. <laughs> These guys always are in to give a show. <laughs> so Micah, he's the one over... Oh, I do have a glove. Oh, well. Too late now. Um, so Micah's this guy who's staying right close to us. Um, he is technically the one I call the big bad wolf, but I think they both apply for that name. And the reason why with Kiera is because if you have seen the movie The Grey, that's the kind of wolf you should have seen in it. She's an Alaskan interior wolf, so uh, if anything had been realistic, that's what you would have seen. Of course, nothing in that movie was realistic. It was basically Jaws, just the wolf version. And so unfortunately, as soon as they released that movie, that's when states like Idaho and Wyoming went to year-round hunting. 
Uh, Wyoming is actually unlimited in 85% of the state. Uh, so it's really unfortunate. You're almost done with that piece. Now, um, over the last 150 years in North America, we've actually only had uh, five attacks by wild wolves on people, and none of them, oh my, uh, none of them have been from healthy wolves. They've all been animals that are either diseased, deformed, or socialized. Socialized meaning being fed at campsites. They tell you not to feed the wildlife for a very good reason. Unfortunately, it often goes ignored. So they're really not um, going out to get you. Their plane is not going to crash in Alaska, and you're not going to get hunted down by wolves afterwards. It just won't happen. Well, Micah here, um, the reason why we call him the big bad wolf is actually because of a rather bad behavior that Miss Kiera taught him. He's young and impressionable, so he learns very quickly. Um, he only has lived in here with her for about three years, and he's, he's four. Uh, I thought he was five for a second, but he's only four years old. Um, he moved in here with her about three years ago when he was just young himself. Um, and Kiera actually had been alone for quite some time. And she used to live with our last wolf dog that was actually on the tour. His name was Saban. Very, very beautiful guy. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, when she lost him, she went into a very deep depression until Micah came in here. And she saw how Micah was young and impressionable. And she says, oh, let me teach you some bad habits. You saw all those sunglasses and the shadow box as we went out the door? A lot of them are hers. Mm -hmm. She will uh, go up to people and she'll pull sunglasses right off their face. But all of our wolves will steal glasses if they're on your head like this or in your, in your shirt. But she says, it's okay to steal sunglasses on the face. Micah says, oh, that's really cool. I like that idea. But of course, not everybody just wears sunglasses. We also have prescription glasses. So Micah, as sneaky as he is, he has figured out that if he comes here, he is known as our gentle giant. Uh, we will take him all the time for a special tour. Or <coughs> Okay, so you guys probably didn't hear his 